Carl Gump. Roger Tree, sir. Your new lecture in anatomy. Age 31. Books on scrofula and apply surgical anatomy. I'm happy to see you rising, Mr. Trees. Thank you, sir. I'd like to see Mary credited. Your industries, accomplishments, and skill ought to be credited. Ignore the squalor of the life chapter, the general dinginess, neglect of poverty without, and you will find a continual medical riches in the London Hospital. We study and treat the widest ranges of diseases and disorders, and we're certainly the greatest institution of our kind in the world. Add to our reputation by going further, and that'll satisfy. So, have you bought a house? Oh, yes, sir, on Wimpole Street. Wimpole Street? Good. Keep at it. You'll have an FRS and 100 guinea feet before you're 40. Hope you found that as an excellent consolation. Consolation? I, I don't know what you mean. I know you don't, but you will. A happy childhood in Dorset, a scientist in the age of science, in an English age, an Englishman, a teacher, and a doctor at the London. Two books published by my 31st year, a house, a wife who loves me, and my God, a hundred guineas before I'm 40. Consolation for what? As of this year, AD 1884, I, Freddie Trees, have excessive blessings. Or so it seems to me. Step it and see, this side of the grave, John Merrick has no hope nor expectation of relief. In every sense, his situation is desperate, a despised creature, without consolation. Tuppence only, step it and see, to live with this physical agony, unremitting pain, is strong enough but to be exposed to a cruelly lacerating expression of horror and disgust by all who behold him is even more difficult to bear. Tuppence only, step it and see. For in order to survive, Merrick forces himself to suffer these humiliations. I repeat, humiliations in order to survive. Thus, he exposes himself to crowds who pay to gape and yawp at this freak of nature. The elephant man, see Mother Nature, uncoarsened and malignant rage. Tuppence. This sign is absurd. Half man, half elephant is not possible. Is he foreign? Right from Leicester. There's nothing to fear. Well, I'm at the doctor across, uh, I'm at the London across the road. I would be interested in seeing him if there is a genuine disorder. He is a mass of paper mache and glue, however. Then pay me nothing. Enter, sir. Merrick, stand up. You bloody donkey. Up, up. Yes. I. I must examine him further at the hospital. Here, here's my card. I'm Trees. I will have a car pick him up and return me. My car will gain admittance. Bye, Bob. He's yours for the day. I wish to examine him in the name of science, you see. Sir, I'm Ross. I look out for him. Get him his living. Found him in Leicester Workhouse. His own mom put him there, age of three. Couldn't bear the sight. Well, you can see why. We, he and I, are in business, see? Use our capital. Go to a bank. Go anywhere. Scientists even. He's good value, though. I'm going to find another like him. Fair enough. Right. Out, Merrick. Bully donkey, out! Oh. The striking feature about him is his enormous head. Its circumference about that of a man's waist. From the brow, there projected a huge bony mass like a loaf, while from the back of the head hung a bag of spongy, fungus-looking skin, the surface comparable to brown cauliflower. From the top of the skull were a few long, lank hairs. The osseous growth from the forehead, at this stage about the size of a tangerine, almost occluded one eye. From the upper jaw, there protruded a mass of bone. It protruded through the mouth like a pink stump, turning the upper lip inside out and making the mouth a wide, slobbering aperture. 
The nose was merely a lump of flesh, only recognizable as a nose from its position. These deformities left the face totally incapable of the expression of any emotion whatsoever. The back was horrible, because from it hung as far down as the middle of the thigh, huge sack-like masses of the same repulsive flesh. The right arm, it was of enormous size and shapeless. It suggested, but was not elephantitis, and was overgrown with pendant masses of the same cauliflower-like skin. The right hand, it was large and clumsy, a fin or a paddle rather than a hand. No distinction existed between the front and back. The thumb was like a radish, the fingers like thick tuberous roots, as the limit was useless. The other arm was remarkable by contrast. It was moreover a delicately shaped limb, covered with a fine skin and a beautiful hand which any woman might have envied. From the chest hung a bag of the same repulsive flesh. It suspended from his neck like the dewlap of a lizard. The lower limbs, having the characters of the deformed arm, were unwieldy, dropsical looking, and grossly misshapen. From the fungus skin growth, there grew a very sickening stench, which was hard to tolerate. To add a further burden to the trouble, the man, when a boy, developed hip disease, thus making him only able to walk with a stick, and thus denying him all means of escape from his tormentors. Mr. Tree, you said when he leaves here, it is for his exhibition again. I do not think it ought to be permitted. It is a disgrace. It's an indecency and a disgrace. It may be in danger in many ways that we do not know. Something ought to be done about it. I am a doctor. What would you have me do? Well, I wouldn't know what to do. I know. for myself. I deserve it, I reckon. Invested enough with you. Pick up your stink if I stick around. Stink of failure. Stink of lost years. Just stink, 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 stink. <coughs> this the one? Just seen the St. Liverpool Street. Here's for your trouble. Uh, oh. What's he say? Fella just makes sounds. He's an imbecile. Uh, bon barge, Johnny. His name's Johnny. He knows his name. That's all, though. Johnny, Johnny, don't follow me, Johnny. Johnny, come on, follow me now. Johnny, Johnny, don't screw, come on. <clears throat> Liverpool Street Station. I've never seen anything like it. It was like being gore in a bleeding cartoon. Got somewhere to go in London, lad? Can't stay Jesus. here. Jesus. You don't understand. He's an embassy. Search him. <coughs> don't let me go through your coat. I'll turn you over to that light. Oh, Jesus. I was only joking. Don't upset yourself. No. Oh. This is car here. You Johnny Merrick? I'm going to give you a car, Johnny. What does it say? Says Mr. Frederick Trees, lecture in anatomy, the London Hospital. I'll go see if I can find him. It's not far. What's he do? Let you around your anatomy? People would think right don't look like that, do they? Jesus, Jesus. Sure, trees, trees, trees. Good Lord, man! That is a mob thing. 
Oh. <coughs> I'm Trees. This is my car. This poor wretch here had to ride from Austin. Good Lord, Merrick? John Merrick, what's happened to you, man? Help me! he bears his cross. It is remarkable. He has made the acquaintance of many religions and those sections of the Bible by heart. Once I grasped his feet, it became quite clear that he has had religious instructions at one time. Yes, I believe it was in the workhouse, Dr. Howe. They are very good about that sometimes. The Psalms he loves. The book of Job perplexes him, he says, but he does not see how a just God could cause such suffering, yet to be merciful. And that he will be saved, he does not know. <coughs> so he is not resentful. Well, Christ is better. Be damned if we can. <clears throat> in any case, Dr. Cheese, he has a religious nature, and further instruction would uplift him. I'd be pleased to provide it if necessary. I plan to speak to him from the pulpit this week. I see your visiting batter as flesh and busy Bishop Powell from his cruciform lair. 
Speak with Mary, sir. I've spoken with him of mercy and justice. There's a true Christian in the rock. This makes my news seem banal. Yet, Frederick, the response to the letter in the Times that I wrote about Merrick has been staggering. The English public have been so generous that Merrick may be supported for life without one cent spent from the hospital funds. That is excellent, sir. God bless the English public. Especially for not killing him after Liverpool Saint Station. Freddie, London is no home for incurables. This is quite irregular, but, but for you I permit it. Though only God knows what you'll do. God does know, sir, and Darwin does not. Well, he better. He deformed him. I had my apprehensions about coming here. It is very fortunate that Merrick is in the hands of Dr. Tree, a true Christian, sir. Freddie's a good man, and he's a brilliant doctor. And that is fortunate to me. But I could not have raised the funds, though, doctor. Mr. Trees, let me not keep you from your duty. Yet, Mr. Gong, consider. Is it for science that we transport English wool to India or Ireland? That brings good churchmen from British hills to the hardships of Africa. Is it science that drives them away? Sir, it is not. It is our Christian duty to bring light and benefices to benighted man that motivates us even as it motivates Dr. Trees towards marriage. To bring salvation where none is. Gordon died a cartoon for it, sir, not for salvation. Well, you're telling me. Not for science. Dr. Trees, I would like to visit Mary weekly, if I may. You will be welcome, sir, I am certain. Then good day, sir. Well, Jesus, my boy. Now that we have the money, what do you plan to do for Mary? Normality, as far as possible. So he would be like us. Ah. Something wrong, Mr. Gum, with us? <coughs> <laughs>
happy here, are you not, John? Yeah. The bobs, they've rid you of your odor, have they not? First time I had tasted your bath. And three meals a day delivered to your room. Yes. This is your promised land, is it not? A roof, food, protection, care, is it not? It is, son. I'll bet you don't know what to call this. No, son. You call it home. Home. Well, you have one now. Say it, John. Home. home. No, John, no. Really say it. I have a home. This is mine. I have a home. This is my home. Excellent, excellent. As long as you abide by the rules, you will be happy. Oh, God. Don't be shy, John. As long as I abide by Rules, I will be happy. Excellent. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why did any of you do that, John? Like what? Like what? John, don't upset yourself. Rules make us happy because they are for our own good. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Now, I'm submitting a follow-up report on you to the Pathological Society. It would help if you told me anything you could remember of your early years, to fill in gaps. Oh, to fill in gaps, that's the workhouse where they put me so I look here. They beat me like a drum, boom, boom, boom. We had to scrub floors. Scrub pan. The floors was always dirty. The pans always tarnished. Nothing you could do by getting beat. They did beat you. Boom, 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 boom. Where the kids go there? Kids? What kids? Oh, the man who got. Oh. Of necessity, <coughs> Will will find other employment, John. You don't want to have crowds gaping at you, do you? No. You don't have to have crowds gaping at you in your own home, do you? No. <coughs> then, Mr. God was merciful. You yourself are proof. Is it not so? Well, is it not so? It's your mercy is hard. What do you have for just? I'm sorry. It's just the way things are. Boom, 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 boom. John Kendall, John Merrick, Mrs. Kendall. You are acquainted with his appearance. He reminds me of an audience I played Cleopatra for in Brighton once. All huge, grim head and grimace and utterly unable to clap. Yes, well, he, his length from us all it comes from being held at arm's length from society. I'm determined that shall end. For example, he loves to meet people and converse. I'm determined he shall. Well, for example, he's never seen the inside of a home before. I had him to mine. And what a reward, Mrs. Kendall. His joy at the most ordinary things. Most important, I feel, however, are women. I will explain. They have always shown the greatest fear and loathing of him, while he adores them, of course. Ah, he is intelligent. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that they are the key to retrieving him from his sensibility. But I must warn you, women are not quite real to him, more creatures of his imagination. Then he is already like other men, Mr. Trees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I thought an actress could help. I mean, unlike most women, you won't give up. You were trained to hide your true feelings and assume others. You mean, unlike most women, I am famous for it. That is really all. Yes, well, if you could enter the room and smile and wish him good morning. And when you leave, shake his hand. Oh, the left one is usable and really quite beautiful, really. And simply say, I am very pleased to have made your acquaintance, Mr. Merrick. Shall we try it? Left hand out, please. I am very pleased to have made your acquaintance, Mr. Merrick. I am very pleased to have made your acquaintance, Mr. Merrick. I am very pleased to have made your acquaintance, Mr. Merrick. I am very pleased to have made your acquaintance, Mr. Merrick. 
By God, they're all splendid, Mrs. Kendall. Apparently, <laughs> so pleased. This will be the day he becomes a man like other men. Oh. Speaking of that, Mr. Treves. Oh, Frederick, please. Freddie, may I commit an indiscretion? Yes. I could not help but noticing from the photographs that, well, of the unafflicted parts of the body, uh, how shall I put it? Oh, yes. I see. Yes. No, no, I, I quite understand. Yes. No, no, it, it is quite normal. Oh. <laughs> you see, the polypus extrusions which disfigure him, they seem to correspond quite regularly to the osseous deformities. That is, excuse me, there is a definite link between the bone disorder and the skin growths. Though for the life of me, I've not discovered what it is or why it is. But in any case, this part would be therefore unafflicted because, well, because, because there's no bone in it, Mrs. Kendall. I mean, none at all, really. Well, <laughs> we learn a little every day, don't we? I am terribly embarrassed. <laughs> Then he must be lonely indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
No! They killed themselves! <laughs> oh, Thank you. 
Mm. Oh, that was so very nice, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, you're certainly a credit to Mr. Tree. And Mr. Tree, you're a credit to the science and medicine, to all of England, and to all of the Christians. Mm. Mr. Mayor, I'm so very pleased to have made your appointment. Mm. about. He knows that salvation must radiate to us or all is lost, which certainly it is not. He seems practical, like me. He's seen enough daily evil to be thankful for the small goods that come his way. He's worried of any cause, but yet he fits in well, like me. anything, for I know he is discreet, like me. <laughs> How odd. I find him curious, compassionate, concerned about the world. Well, rather like myself. Frederick Treves, A.D. 1889. Of course he is rather odd, and hurt, and helpless not to show the struggling. And so am I. He knows I need to raise money for the London, I'm certain. He understands that I'd be derelict if I didn't. He fits in well, like me. I, as a seminarist, had many of the same doubts, struggles as he does, and hope that they may be overcome. When my husband, His Royal Highness Edward, Prince of Wales, asked Dr. Treves to be his personal surgeon, 
He said, Dear Freddy, if you can put up with that elephant look, you can surely put up with me. You see him out of fashion, Freddy, as he sees me. Social context critical. Oh, by the way, you know the bloody papers, all lies. Merrick visibly worse in 86, 87. That as he rises higher in the constellations of society, he becomes visibly more grotesque and proof positive. He is like me. Like his condition, which I make no sense of. I make no sense of my own. the money. Well, Freddy, Freddy, old boy, calm down. If I was such a scoundrel, how would I dare face investors like yourself? Broken contracts? Oh, I never considered them actual contracts. Just preliminary things. Get the old deal underway. They will contract something between gentlemen, and this attack on me shows they are no gentlemen. Now I'm just here to say that the company remains a terribly attractive proposition. You could spare a few, maybe... Oh, Mr. Gong, how good to see you. Oh, just your market to break here. How wonderful to characterize, thanks to you. Lord John, allow me. I must take Frederick from you. Keep him at work. It's in his contract. What one ain't breaking it. Sort of thing makes the world kind of fly apart, isn't it? Yes, of course. Sorry to hear you're so pressed. Expect we'll see less of you around the London now. Oh, actually, overdue for employment in the city. Freddy, won't? <coughs> he plain fooled me. He was kind to Mary. You have risen fast and easily, my boy. Break now. It doesn't seem fair somehow. The man's a moral swamp. Is that not clear yet? Is he attractive? The seat I've been in. Friendly? Swindlers can be. Another loan? Well, not another sin. It may be your money, Freddy, but I will not tolerate laboring like an abbey, so you should represent honest, charitable, and those compassionate signs under swimmers mucking up the pitch. He has succeeded in destroying himself so rapidly, you are no doubt for one instant that was his real aim all along. He broke the contracts, gambled the money away, lied, and like an infant in his own mess, he gurgles and wants to do it again. Never mind the details. I don't want to know. Just break and be glad. Don't hesitate. Today, one man won't swamp. Don't be sucked in. Have you seen the papers? Yes. 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 Great pity. Freddy, today. Freddy? He is Eustace. Should be all right. Come. John? To not be able to stay our visit for today, I must, I must untangle a few things. There's Ireland and Snork are friendly and respectable. <coughs> I will check in in a few days. This is a hospital, not a marketplace. Don't you ever forget, it. ever. I'm sorry. Not you. It's me. Well. Would you like to weave today? Don't you think weaving might be fun? So many things are fun. Most men can't enjoy them. It's their loss, I guess. Contract? What do you mean contract? No. And what do I? Contract for me? What?
I was thinking, charge these people. Pleasure of the elf, pleasure of the elephant man's company. The right spirit is everything. They pay happily if you charge in the right spirit. No road, they won't come back. What's crazy? Ross sows, trees harvest. It's not fair, is it, John? When you think about it, and I do, because I'm old. Figure, you charge in the right spirit. This lot of pay happily. No, 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 no. Had a woman yet? Is that what my say, man? <coughs> in my time, the two were stars. It is not what nights does, man. I may well go to the Doss House Street. Died there anyway. Twin filthy Doss House rides. Nothing in the belly but ass. I don't like pain, John. The future gives pain sense. Without a future, 5% John. By God, and I am lost. Drifted by, but no one spoke. London, mind you. Hell's probably the provinces. Still, though, as loud as how she stayed, she said it did have hints of becoming a kind of good. She fled. Don't forget, it saved you once, my interference. You know well enough. It was not proper. How can you tell if she's on the way? There's still standards we abide by. Oh, yes, they make a happy bit called the fire. Well, not always. Oh? <coughs> Look, if you're angry, just say so. Whose standards are there? I'm not in the mood that it's chipping away at the edges, John. That woman, that's Juliet. Juliet? Yes, she does then come back. Oh. Yes, I see. Yes, her standards too. So? So what? So did you see her name? <laughs> well, when I was operating, of course, I... It's okay, Susan. 
was rendered, therefore, utterly incapable of self-critical speech, thus of the ability to change. The heart showed signs of worry at this unchanging yet untenable state. The back was horribly stiff from being kept against a wall to face the discontent of the world, order for his convenience. The surgeon's hands were well developed and strong. People put the most delicate carvings up, for others' own good. Due also to the normal head, the right arm was an enormous power, but so incapable of distinction between the assertion of authority and the charitable act of giving that it was often to be found disgustingly beating others for their own good. The left arm was slighter and fairer, and may be seen in typical position, hand covering the genitals, which were treated as a solid colony, in constant need of restriction, governance, and punishment, for their own good. To add a further burden to his children, the wretched man, when a boy, developed the same spiritual duality, therefore was unable to feel what others feel, nor reach harmony with them. He would thus be denied all means of escape from those he attended. We do not think it ought to be permitted. It is a disgrace. It is a pity and a disgrace. It may be a danger in many ways that we do not know. Something ought to be done about it. We hope in 20 years we will understand enough to put an end to this affliction. 20 years? Sir, that is unacceptable. Had we caught it earlier, it might have been different. But its condition has already spread both east and west. The truth is, I am afraid, we are dealing with an epidemic. bloody knees for that bloody man. What is it, Freddy? <clears throat> What's not sour for you? It, it's just the overarc of things. Quite inescapable that as he's achieved greater and greater normality, his conditions push him closer and closer to the grave. So, a parable of growing up, to become more normal, to die, more accepted, to worsen? It, it is just a mockery of everything we live by. I'm sorry, Freddy. I didn't catch that one. Nothing's gone south. I, I don't know. Cheer up. You're knighted. Your clients will be king. Nothing succeeds, my boy, like success. I find my sessions with him utterly moving. He struggles so. I suggested he might like to be confirmed, and he leaped at it like a man, lost in a desert, to an oasis. Yes, well, he's very anxious to do what others do, if he thinks it is what others do. Do you cast doubt, sir, on his faith? No, sir, I do not. Yet he makes each of us think we are deeply like ourselves, and yet we're not like each other. I conclude that we've polished him like a mirror and shout hallelujah when he reflects it to the inch. I've grown sorry for it. I do wish I understand you, brother. Is something troubling you, Mr. T? Of course it is. How about 
Here is a pamphlet I've written due mostly to the grotesque ailments I've been caused by corsets. Fashion overrules me, of course. These women do not unstrap themselves with corsets. Some cannot. I have still a little time in a week. I spend Sundays in the poor wards to catch up on work. Work being 20-year-old women who look and abuse 50 were born out of this. Young men with appalling industrial conditions, I turn out as quickly as possible to return to the workforce. Happily, most of my patients are not poor. They are middle class. They overeat and drink so grossly as to destroy nature and themselves and all around them. So further, they will not last. Higher up, sir, above this middle class, I confront these same deformities, bulged out by the unlimited resources and the ruthfulness of privilege, and the most scandalous is a patient yoked to the grossest ignorance and constraint. I counsel against it where I can. I am ignored, of course. So what, sir, could possibly be troubling me? I am an extremely successful Englishman in a successful and respected England that tells me daily by the way it lives that it wants to die. I am in despair of that. Science, observation, deduction, conclusion can no longer serve as consolation. I apparently think, see things others do not. I do wish I understand what you're saying, Mr. G, but as for consolation, there is in Christ's church consolation. I am sure we are not here for mere consolation. But look at marriage, happy example. Ah, yes. You like my garden, too. My dog, my wife, groomed, prop collared, and somewhat stupefied. <coughs> all happy examples, all of them. So, is it all the one fun to know what to do with? Whatever nature, is it? Rob it? No. No, not really. But what he has become. I, I, I am a very good guard. Is that clear, sir? By God, I take such good care of anything. Anything! You... Are you not convinced that he is almost dangerously human? And how could he be? After what we've given him. But you like, sir, if he is so grateful for patrons, so greedy to be patronized, and no demands, no rights, no hopes, past averted, present, false, future, nil! What better could you ask? Of course, he puts up with all of them. Of course, I do mean taken when I say given. As in, as in what we have given him. But, well, you knew that, I'll bet. <laughs> do you mean charity? I cannot understand you. Help me.
Bob the Sure. Alright, get the map. Get the map. Thank you. 